Welcome to Off the Cut, episode 122 for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. And of course, with the big holiday coming up uh, July 4th, we have to remind you that the Green Suitors podcast still sucks and it is available on Apple and Spotify if you want to listen. But the best place to buy woodworking tools that don't suck is KM Tools. That's right. Because if it's in their shop, it's in their shop. <laughs> Every single tool on camtools.com is either created by Jonathan and his team or it's stuff that they actually use in their own workshops. It's all high quality stuff. And a portion of every single sale goes to the Katz Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. Nice. Putting tools in the hands of people who need them. And what else they do, Eric? And... They're nice enough, Jonathan and his team, want to give back to all the listeners of the show. And they give away a $50 gift card to Cam Tools every single month. All you have to do is sign up on Patreon and you are automatically entered to win. And the fun thing, the real fun thing, is that there is a brand new tool that came out. The Bourbon Blade, for those of you who know uh, Jason Hibbs. He and I got Jonathan, a funny story about that. Okay, well, well, I'm sure we'll yeah, talk we'll about we'll get to we'll get to it later. <laughs> it's not out yet, so you can't get it in your hands. We don't have one, and you know who else doesn't have a bourbon blade in their hands? Jason no? Hibbs. No, Jason has one. <laughs> oh, oh, our our guest. <laughs> yeah, our guest. There you go. Our we've got guest. Yeah, we've got Logan Newman, which you might know as Newman Specials, with us tonight. Logan, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us, man. It's great to talk to you again. Hey, guys. Hey, it's good to be here. Thank you so much. I I was hoping to have a, a bourbon blade in my hand, but uh, <laughs> you know they didn't send me the the prototype. I was disappointed. I thought for sure <laughs> I was on the list, uh, and apparently I was not on that list. I was not on the email. So yeah, oh, that's all right. We don't have one either. Yeah, that makes yeah. you feel better. We just and we're you get to... contractually obligated to hype it up, though. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool. Gets... I like it. Looks amazing. It look cool. I, I, yeah, it looks awesome. Uh, so I saw that idea. come out. I was like, yeah, right. You're like, dude, this, this would be perfect. And, and uh, Eric, I know you've talked about it. You don't do the uh, everyday carry. I don't either, but it makes me want to. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> so we, I feel like the last few episodes we've been talking about the, the everyday carry thing. We've been going crazy on knives. So lately. I've been trying <laughs> to, to keep that one with me. Mm -hmm. I lost it. I lost it the yeah. other day. <laughs> <laughs> it was that super, super stupid heavy one. The, the like, yeah. uh, what was it? The Grampy Uncle, Uncle Grampy Uncle or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, 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 something like that. I lost it already. So you take a scuba yeah. diving with you, and it just sank right to the bottom of the lake. <laughs> no, I was opening up a box, and I set it down somewhere. I don't know where it was. Uh, see, I find if they don't have the little clip on them, and I sit down somewhere, yeah, uh, and it's like because you know we're taller, so our knees come up. And it creates that angle, and it just slides out of my pockets. Yeah, I lose keys and stuff yeah. like that too. Yeah. yeah, but Zach, you said you had you had something you want to talk about the bourbon blade. Oh, I wanted to just say about the bourbon blade because last week you were talking about how uh, Jason Hibbs got in contact with you, and he offered to send you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I was like. God damn, Eric, so jealous. I was over here seething <laughs> in my own jealousy. I was like, oh, he's so much better friends with Jason. And uh, and then I went on Instagram. And I, you know that section of Instagram where like all the spam messages go? Hey, he was in your spam? Yeah, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> He messaged me and he was like really nice. He's like, hey dude, I want to like send you out a sample of the bourbon blade. And it was like a week old. So oh. I was like, oh man, yeah. I felt so bad. So that's right. Jason doesn't check his messages. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> That's too funny. So, so Logan, you said you do not carry a knife. I don't. I don't. And uh, I, I was just shutting down a bunch of... Uh, I had another laptop beside me, just so you guys know. And everyone broke up. So, I don't, I don't know if my Wi-Fi is sucking tonight. Uh, um, no. We so lost you for like you five seconds, but you're good. We can hear yeah. you. Yeah. You're fine. Okay. It always happens. Like, I mean, this is just, it is, what it, it is what it is. This is the magic of doing a podcast <laughs> online, right? There's delays. There's people dropping in and out. It's fun. It makes it, it makes, uh, it keeps things interesting for the audience. The We're professionals. We, we know how to skate by it, but yeah, yeah. so, 
So, Zach, you uh, were telling me something was going on that I was unaware of. So, I, 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 oh, I feel like I'm listening to a, uh, God. <laughs> no, Lu Logan, you with us now? Uh oh. We're having some technical difficulties. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, yeah. I'm here, but I it's no, oh, it's irritating. I'm sorry, guys. No, no you're fine. Okay. I, th I think it's fine now. It looks like it cleared up to me. Yeah, I was getting a little bit of feedback there for a second. But Talk amongst yourselves. Now. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess well, Zach, let's talk about this. What have you been up to recently? While we get oh. Logan's uh, internet back on par here, man, I've been having. One of the I'm working on this project, so I finished the outdoor movie theater project that I did, and I was like, yeah. "Oh, sweet! I have a whole month before I have to get another video out." Because yeah. you know, I like to keep that cadence like one one a month, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was so psyched. I was like, "Oh, an entire month to do a project? That's no problem." So I've been working on this like new video game console project, and uh, I've just hit a roadblock that I've been stuck on for the last two weeks. I what just kind of robot? Tell me about it. I'm doing one of those micro, you know, the micro soldering that yeah, I the, showed the drag, you before. The drag yeah, thing. I was doing the drag, and it's like, it's super precise. So I'm working on adding these chips to a board to keep things as high level as possible. And each chip has probably 40 legs on it that I need to solder to the board. And there's okay. four chips. Yeah, yeah. So there's 160 of these tiny little legs that I have to solder down to a board. And if one of them is wrong, then the whole thing doesn't work. And mm. I have no way to troubleshoot this thing. So I've just been attempting it. I, and it's like a setup too. Like if I, to, to plug it in and test it out, it takes me like 10 minutes. So uh. I'll go through, I'll check all of them. I have my microscope camera out. I'm checking every single one. And it's just... It's you can't me a figure it out. Nuts. Yeah, and it's you can only do it for so long too. It's like because I'm like hunched over, my yeah, back yeah. starts to hurt. I'm like doing these little precise moves. My hand starts to cramp up. So I've just been stuck on this one thing. So I think uh, my next video might be a little delayed because I only yeah. have the one that I'm working on. So is this a perfect example of a project that you're working on it, and now you're just like, f this, like. I'm so over it. I literally just want to scrap it and move on. Kind of, yeah. You know what I did the other day, which was actually kind of nice, was I've got like four or five days of footage of me working on this thing. I just like, okay, I'm going to stop working on it because I'm going to drive myself nuts. And I do what I think you do a lot of the time is I went in and I like organized all the footage. I started recording some voiceovers. Yeah, yeah. I started like kind of creating like the story arc a little bit. Yeah. And uh, and that was that was satisfying. That actually reinvigorated me I because I was like, F this, I'm going to like scrap this project and just move on to something else because this is so annoying. But yeah. I was, looked at what I had and I was like, oh, but it's cool. I think there's a little bit of a good idea here. So I'm reinvigorated, but I'm also having a hard time. with it. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect thing to do. Like you're yeah. really frustrated with the project. It's yourself. How can you continue to work on it? But like di divert your attention, right? So like, yeah, you went in to go and decided to go edit the the footage. Sometimes I would just be like, okay, I'm gonna clean up my shop yeah. mid project and just yeah. like put That's everything away. One. Yes, yeah. Anything you can do to kind of like disrupt and like, because I'm the type of person who, when something's not going right, I keep trying. And then I just get madder and madder <laughs> and I'm like, I start rushing and I start making more mistakes and I start yeah. screwing things up. I think it's very important as a maker to like take a step back sometimes be like, you know yeah. what? I'm getting upset. I'm going to come back to this in 24 hours and reattempt. And cause cool. giving yourself that break, you come up with solutions and you calm down. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also a perfect time to hurt yourself. Like totally. when you, you're, you're, screwing up you're getting mad yeah and you know that's the perfect time where you get careless and like you could burn the snot out of yourself with that soldering iron if you're oh i've definitely careful. burned my fingies a few times on this project <laughs> you gotta you gotta do like an instagram reel of all the times you're recording yourself and you're like damn it crap damn it <laughs> you yeah. just burn yourself 
But, yeah, there's a few of those. There's a few of those. So, sure. so what percentage would you would you say you are through that project? Are you at like the 80, 90 percent mark, or where are we? Dude, no, I'm like at like the like 30, 40 percent mark, which oh. is what makes it so frustrating. So what I want to do is I want to do all of this like micro soldering and technical work, and then yeah. I want to build the case for it. So I haven't even started designing the case. I have like a rough idea in my head of what I want it to look like, but I have to do all this stuff first. So I know what the shape of the insides is going to be before I can start making the outside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Logan, are we coming through clear yet? Yeah. How are we doing on the tech? Yeah. Yeah. It's better. I don't Okay. Cool. I'm not, I'm not a technical guy. Don't ask me to solder anything. Don't ask me to, <laughs> you know, Hey, I, my, my my strength is in turning something off and turning it back on again. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a skill a lot of people don't have in and of hey, itself. It's all good. The joke on the podcast is I'm the guy who doesn't know any of the technical details. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I don't I'm know. Not, what's I won't take your place. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, it's, we have one of those, uh, it, it's called a deco and it's supposed to be a mesh and everything's supposed to be connected. And I beats me, man. Probably I haven't turned it off in in however long it is, so that could be it too. True, true. Oh well. Anyway, so hi guys. Hi, Logan. <laughs> this is our guest, uh, Logan Newman, also known as Newman Specials. It looks like your internet's good, so welcome. Thank you. We can pivot. We're. I'm glad to be here. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you guys okay. know what you're doing. Happen. Yeah. So for the folks who don't uh, know you, well, first of all, you must be living on a rock because, dude, you've got a massive instagram mm -hmm. account mm -hmm. like yeah well we, i we, mean we, that but what's that mean what's that really mean nothing yeah <laughs> well i, I mean, I, mean I i don't know i look I at your, your account, sentiment like, especially on instagram recently <laughs> yeah true true what are so logan your primary platform is instagram right like that's where i met you that's where i've always interacted yeah, with yeah. you the most but you're also on TikTok too. Yeah. Um, are you on Facebook as well? YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, you know, you, you post to Instagram. It you can make it cr uh, cross post to uh, Facebook. Facebook. So I do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and then uh, and then I do YouTube Shorts because you know I, I listen to you guys. I'm I'm uh, amazed by what you guys can do on YouTube because I. I don't have the patience to do the long <laughs> form. I don't have, it's just so much work. It's a lot of work. It is yeah, a lot of work. Yeah. It's very much. And even like, if you're literally just going to film a project and have no like commentary, just do like tool noises, just to film all of that and like post it. And like, you know, a timeline that makes sense. Like you're still going to spend, at least a day or two putting that video together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, I did a, uh, I did a video for the maker collab university. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, I posted about, about it the other day, what it was, but what I did, uh, Keith, uh, KJ, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, he, he says, uh, I got this actually from Pete from uh, uh, Petrie's, woodshop he said edit it every night when you sit yes. down edit at night and so i took the 20 some hours of video and every oh, night no. when i sat down i edited it well, no it was good it was good because i sat down every night w after i had filmed it and i was able to edit it and take care of it and i figured everything sure. out so by the time it came to do the voiceover and re-edit it it was down to like 50 minutes and then okay you know i was at by the time I was done, it was half an hour. Right. Okay. Right. That's what I do is like, I will, I'll film for the day, put the footage on the computer, chop that up. And that might literally have just been simple as me, like pulling the lumber, you know, off the, off the lumber rack, milling it and rough cutting it. Okay. That might be 40 to 50 clips, but I can just go chop, 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 chop. Okay. Now I've got a 90 second segment done. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so right. I can like break up the work in smaller bits. And it doesn't seem so daunting as, Oh my God, I have 20 hours of footage. I now <laughs> have to go through. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big and that's that's what you know. So daunting. I can't do it. I don't know how you guys you guys sit down. Well, I know you guys have editors that help and do a lot of it. I don't. Yeah. I do all Actually, of mine. I'm curious. What do you do? You all of it. Yeah, I do all of mine. <laughs> yeah, I have an editor who helps me out, which I really appreciate. It definitely is a big, big time saver on me. It's even just like the the organizing, like the raw man hours that go into organizing all the footage. It's like it's nice to be relatively hands off with that. Um. Yeah. Well, I was listening to um, uh, Sam Ray Mundy talk about how she has her editor just sort of break it into manageable chunks for her yeah. then to edit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. So like reverse it. So it's, yeah, a lot of people get an editor that yeah. basically does like the initial heavy lifting, like take all of this footage, get rid of the spots where I'm like walking up to the camera pressing record, then walking over to the tool and then shutting the tool off, then walking back over to the camera, like cut off the first and end. And like, that is unbelievably easy for an editor to do, but mm -hmm. it is a massive time saver for, for a creator. Right. So they would take that kind of work all day yeah. and you might get this rough thing of footage that's, you know, okay, now you have 45 minutes, do, do whatever you want with it. Like, yeah, that's pretty manageable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I there's a some guy contacted me late. You, you know how you get the emails from oh, yeah. everywhere. Hey, Hello, do you want dear. us to do this? We're going to do that, Ooh. and we're so I got some guy who's offered to do the yeah. So I I, I have a theory about that. Uh, okay. The hello dear, okay. I think is that is that we as as in English start our letters grammatically. Dear so and so, yeah. yeah. Dear Zach. So my theory is that, right? So my my theory is that they're just taking that dear, and that's the first name. Oh, so you're dear Zach. So it's hello dear instead of hello Zach. When they uh, translate it, it just takes that first name. Maybe, uh, yeah. I was wondering sense? if it's maybe because it, these are always Chinese companies, or I assume they're always Chinese companies that are saying sell the hello dear thing. I thought maybe it's like in China, Mandarin or Cantonese, whichever it is, it's customary to call somebody dear. Like that's like a normal saying. It's like hey dude or something like that. And then yeah. they're just copying and pasting into Google Translate or something like that. That's mm -hmm. definitely possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, they always well, seem polite. Like these yeah, emails yeah. never come over like, yeah. like rude or they always seem polite and sincere. It's just that you get so many of them that you're like, this is obviously spam or like they, they don't want to send you some absolute hunk of junk plastic <laughs> tool. And they're like, will you, will you do a whole YouTube video about this? You're like, <laughs> no. Yeah. They're just desperate to get any eyes whatsoever on some sort of like drop shipped e-commerce product that costs them pennies to make. And they're selling for 20, 30 bucks, right? Cause their exactly. margins are through the roof on something exactly. like that. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm tired of the, uh, the TikTok ads. Yeah. So, okay. So I guess this kind of, I, I wanted to ask you Newman, like <laughs> Logan, what is your, uh, how, how does your business work? So you're, you're kind of intonating that you're a little upset with Instagram. So have you, I know you can earn natively on TikTok and, you know, Facebook to some degree. So I'm kind of curious for, uh, as a creator who doesn't really do a lot of long form content, what's, uh, what's the business model? So, you know, and that brings us to what you and I talked about and why, you know, you sort of reached out. Uh, yeah, my, I, you know, you have you have bonuses which pay a little bit. You know, I, I might get a little bit of something from that. Uh, yeah. I might get something if if something pops off on Facebook, I might get a couple bucks from that. Right. I'm still not monetized. I think I have forty seven or forty eight thousand on YouTube, uh, all from shorts. So I'm not monetized anyway. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. You, okay. you got to get what, like 10 million views in 60 days to get, get monetized on 90, from... I think it is. And I've, I've gotten close a couple of times and then, you know, um, 40,000 watch hours or something. 
And it's a small period, yeah, right? It has ridiculous. to be within like 30, 60 days or something like that. Yeah. I, I think it's 90. I think they extended okay, it okay. to 90 days. Um, the, you know, so I make a little bit of money. Really, my big stuff comes from selling stuff. And, and it's yeah. kind of interesting Physical because. Good. Yeah, so my original my original thought when I got on Instagram, as I'm sure everyone's was, is I'm gonna get and okay, coasters, concrete coasters. Yeah, <laughs> right. He has listened to the podcast. I'm gonna <laughs> oh. I'm gonna sell a million of these concrete yeah. coasters. I'm gonna have five gallon buckets full of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't have one. I'm I'm you know, just saying. Um, I was looking to see if I had any in the drawer. But no, I thought I did, but I don't. I thought I had some. <laughs> you know what? If you did, you would know if you did. That side of the desk would be leaning down. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so, so like everyone, you know, you're like, I'm going to get on Instagram. I'm going to show my stuff. Everybody's going to love my stuff. I'm going to start selling things and people are going to buy from me all the time. And then you get on here and you're like, all right, I'm just having fun. I'm just posting stuff. And right. I, you know, the weirdest thing I sold on Instagram randomly um, is I showed a picture of a slab that a friend of mine had, had sold me. Uh, and somebody in, I think she was in Florida at the time, South Carolina, bought it from me. Unfortunately, I still have it here because oh. this was years ago. And, you know, she paid 300 bucks for it. But, but like, you, you don't sell a whole lot of stuff because the people who yeah. are watching your stuff are fellow makers. Right. They're not they're not going to go, "Oh, I love that cutting board. I'm going to buy that cutting board from you." Yep. Right. Yeah. Very fair. And so and so, you know, you guys with the long form, you're selling the content and people are going to watch it, which is, you know, what you want. I have found for me over the past uh, probably year and a half, two years that doing more educational focus has been where my strength lies and so then mm -hmm. What happened was I started selling jigs and stuff and that other people were like, oh, I could make that, but it's easier to buy it. Or totally. I like right. the way you made it. Yeah. 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 And that's also plays well to selling to other makers, right? Because right. You're, right. You, you've, you've identified that your audience or I mean, maybe you're, mo I, you know, you have hundreds of thousands of followers. So I have to assume that there are some people in there who are not, makers but are kind of watching to see what you can do but i guess even like a, yeah yeah but i guess even uh an entry level maker could make a cutting board or something like that right so the jig is jig is kind of perfectly tailored to to like an entry level uh maker uh yeah so so tell me more about this infamous jig i so i had no mm -hmm. idea of of this situation and then feel free to go into as, as little or as much detail as you want on this. Let's just talk about the jig in general. Tell me about this. Cause I wasn't even aware of this. Oh, as soon as so I there, there it, are, I right, know so here's the story. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is, this is one of them. So, so let's start Two. no, when was it probably, Oh, a year ago in, in March or April. Um, Ethan um, Abramson reached out and he's yeah, like, right, yeah. listen, I'm working with this company. They're going to start doing, and you guys tell me if I break up. Um, yeah, it's you're so good. weird. You, I don't you get, you we'll sorry about the wi -Fi. give you the thumbs up to let you know you're still good. <laughs> <laughs> or the thumbs down to tell me I suck. Um, <laughs> so the, the Ethan came out and he goes, listen, I'm working with this company. The goal is to be a middleman between a maker and their community so that we can get things out that, you know, the maker themselves can't actually get to and do. Um, it's just too much work for them to make and sell. Okay. And so uh, he says, we're working with about, I don't know, there's nine different people. We'd love to have you on board. I was like, I, I don't know, man. I, what what do I have that people are going to buy? He's like, dude, you're always showing things and people are talking about how good it is. Let's get you on board. Let's talk about it. So right. I think actually this is what we started with. So this is just a trim router flattening jig. And mm -hmm. the thing is, and, and the whole thing with woodpeckers, what I said was that 
they copied the idea, right? Their design, they have a massive design. I mean, their whole business model is we come out with new things every couple of months. We yeah. sell those. That gets our old stuff seen so that we have, they have to keep doing this. And yes. yeah. uh, I don't know if you guys know Chris from a glimpse inside. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he could, yeah. they copied completely his sanding dock. I mean, yeah. just really? absolute exact copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, it's a hundred percent copy. And if you listen to him, uh, he knows someone who was in the room when it happened that the, the designers brought it up and, and the guy in the room was said, Hey, Chris already sells this. And they said, we don't know. No, Chris, we ain't never seen this before. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so when they came out with what's that, you're good. You're good. You're good. Sorry. Sorry. So when they came out with mine, it's, it's, it's similar enough that, you know, no one else was doing a trim router flattening jig. You didn't see any riding on a table. Everyone that everyone did was on rails or on yeah. the metal, you know, it was either wooden rails or metal with guides. Mm -hmm. And I came out with this and everybody's like, that's a great idea. And actually it started out as a, uh, as a dado jig. So I could cut dados and then I needed to clean up something. So I was the first person to come out with this. And then, you know, a couple months later, there's woodpeckers coming out with a design that, is just similar way similar to mine and the whole thing i always said was they have a design department why is it so similar to mine when they have enough money yeah. to, to come up with something original yeah, yeah. so i and, yeah. and again it doesn't mean anything you know and and the the instagram video the reel that i did was because it was so random i woke up on a saturday morning to a video that i had posted I don't know, like two months before, a month before. And all of a sudden the video was popping off and I was getting <laughs> comments. By the end of the day, I had gotten several hundred comments and 95% of them were, you should have patented it. You're an idiot. Quit whining. You're whining about something wow. you should have taken advantage of. Blah, blah, blah. And, and the only thing I can think of, because it was just so bizarre to be just attacked over the course of this day until I figured out you could turn off comments for everyone <laughs> who wasn't following you. And then, and then that's that it all went away. But I, yeah. But I think what happened was somebody somewhere must have said, look at this guy whining about this and posted it on their page. And just everybody went, Oh, I'm going to go and jump on this dude. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, I, I don't know if you guys have ever looked into patents. I don't know if 90% of people, I think, Think that a patent is you send a letter to yourself with it inside and it's stamped and all of a sudden you have this irrefutable yeah. proof that, you know, right. And then you send it into someone and $200 later, you have this thing that no one can. It's can a beat. nightmare of a system, isn't right. it? Right. Yes. Expensive too. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so, like 13 grand to get an actual patent. Oh. It's years in development. It's, and then, and then on top of that, you also have to be able to, uh, uh, defend the patent. So if someone yeah. else goes like, if I wanted to say, Hey, woodpeckers is copying my design, I would have to go to court and that's another three, $4,000 and they yes. can drag it out at which point, yeah. right. I'm, yeah. I'm broke. And they're yeah. like, hey, hey, bye guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, patenting a lot of things just isn't worthwhile. And, and again, I know I'm talking nonstop here, but this no, is a good. patentable idea anyway. Yeah. Like this is not something you could patent because it's while while it's an original design. It's basically, I went sideways with the design that was there. Mm -hmm. Everyone was going to the full size, and everyone was riding on the rails. And I said, "Let's do this." There's nothing yeah. patentable about this. But I think so, the more in interesting, like this, the more interesting discussion about this is something that we've talked to several people about in the past, especially like Drew, uh, Drew Witt from Witworks, who has like a whole mm -hmm. um, 3D printing business. We've talked to Jonathan about it. The, the, the simple question that's simple to state, but difficult to answer is how different do products need to be yeah. to substantiate themselves as something different, right? Because like, look at a table. 10%. Saw, right? 
Look at yeah. the table saw. All the different brands out there make a table saw that 99% do all the exact same thing, except it has one little thing different, right? You could make the same argument that all those companies are copying one another. It's it's like, where do you draw the line? I think that's what's, what's challenging. Yeah. Well, I think it comes down. I mean, first of all, it's like 10% different and, and that's what they say. It makes it a different product. Okay. So the, the, I actually talked to attorneys, uh, patent attorneys about other stuff I had done. Sure. And basically what they said was, I'm, I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to go with this. Your design is complicated enough that if China wanted to make one, one change to a hinge that you're using here, it would be a different product and your patent would be unenforceable. Yeah. Wow. So it's yeah. almost like a complete waste of, of money in that sense, right? Yeah. Unless you have the resources to manage it, manufacture it, and and fight it off. Like, you know, you, you look it, right? at let's let's right. Let's talk yeah. about Festool Domino. Sure. Right. I mean, their patent is running out sometime this year, but you know, they've had a patent. You don't see anyone else coming out with things that are similar enough to that because they have the money and the ability to enforce it. And it's, right. you know, you can't make anything different. And then you talk about SawStop, obviously, who released the patent. But for years, they fought with companies, anyone who came up with anything. Bosch. You guys, um, yeah. Zach, you might remember. Yeah. Okay. So you remember the Bosch Reacts. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I've never seen one, but I'm aware of it. I saw it in, um, I think, popular woodworking or fine woodworking or, you know, whatever it was uh, years ago. And it was the coolest thing. It was a CO2 cartridge. When it sensed flesh, the CO2 yeah. cartridge fired, the blade dropped yeah. down. And then to get started, you just changed out the CO2 cartridge. So yeah. it didn't damage that was the, it. the blade. Nope. You could get going right sure. away. And yeah. Hmm. Well, and saw stop, you know, fought them and the court said, well, Hey, uh, you know, this is similar. It's too similar. Blah blah blah. So interesting, because to my mind, that would be ten percent different than I would agree. Oh, yeah. Just jamming. It's interesting. I'm actually looking online, and it looks like it's still listed on their website, and it's maybe for with sale. a contractor saw, right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Is it only? So I think I think it was like. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Well, I'm wondering if it's available in some markets, but not in others. It's I, I I saw it on there, but they did fight it. And it was, it was weird because it was a really cool design. And I don't know if it was, maybe it was a full size table saw that they fought, you know? True. Yeah. So I'd be okay, curious so, to you know, uh, long term, the, with saw stop giving up that patent, if they do come out with a, a more non-destructive version of that mechanism. Yeah. To compete, you know? But I guess that so, all comes down to if there's competition at all. Can, right. we, can we back up for a second, Logan? Uh, I w so how long had you been... Was that jig your first jig? That you were The first one I was product? selling with We See and See That. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I... That had been... I started selling that last June. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, we sold a couple of them um, at one point. So... We see and see that went out of business uh, the end of the year. And the basic reason was um, their model, again, was to be the middleman. They didn't want to do any advertising. Yeah. And okay. not everybody was selling the same amount. Yes. And so I my stuff was selling really well, which is why I've been in sort of a business hell. And, and the conversation that you had with Katz Moses, with John, was really got to me because I have been in this place that he was talking about. Um, so I started that, but I mean, I, I first showed that on TikTok and Instagram probably, I don't know, two years ago, you know, okay. it, the first time I showed it had probably four or 500,000 views and people are like, this is nice. the coolest thing ever. Right. And so, and it's funny because you don't realize I should have jumped on on board with making it back then. I should have figured out a way to do it back then. But I never to me, so many of these things are like, OK, I've come up with an idea. I'm going to show it and everyone else will be able to just make it easily. And and right. Yeah. That's not always the case. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, or like you were saying, you know, if it might take somebody a couple hours to make it themselves, or they can buy it online for fifty bucks, a hundred bucks. You know, everybody's time is worth different amounts to them, right? If you only get into the shop to work on the weekends, it's like, yeah, I'd rather focus on the project. I'll just buy the jig to save some time. And that's funny because I've said that so many times. One of the things that really ticks me off is when people come on to my comments and and they got to be a jerk. Oh, you know, I can make this in five minutes. No one should buy this. You're, you know, you're a hack. And anyone who can make, who is no buying place. this is a loser. I'm like, I'm like, you're just, don't be an ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, there's, there's no shortage of jealous, mean people on the internet. Right. So, yeah. so not everybody yeah. wants yeah. to spend Which a platform? week to save. Sorry, Derek, go ahead. I was going to say, not everybody wants to spend a week to build a jig for a five minute yeah. job. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, um, and that's the thing, like, and that's always the big thing is, and, and I think Zach, you said it perfectly is a lot of the people, and, and I had this conversation with, uh, uh, I went to a cabinet shop today. I was talking to this guy who he, his, he old man. So he owns the business that his dad and his uncle started in the sixties. So this guy's been doing it. His son was there, uh, which was really cool. His son came up to me. He's like, I've been following you on Instagram for four oh, years. Nice. It's so nice oh, to nice. meet you. That's cool. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I was like, "Hey, nice to meet you." Um, because that never happens. But um, you know, you go into it, and the idea is for a lot of the people who follow me, you, they're guys who are wanting to get into it, who are learning this stuff. Yeah. And and we have a limited amount of time. Not you know, I my my kids are now older, but especially if you have little kids, you're like, "All right, I'm going to have an hour and a half in the shop tonight." Yeah, you don't want to spend an hour and a half making something. Yeah. Like that, when you want to make a cutting board for Aunt Susie. Yeah. And I think there's there's a percentage of it. Like, I know when I, when I first started, you know, I would follow these folks online and I would see that they had a, a product. I was like, okay, I actually do want that product. And I also understand the economics, the financial impacts of this. I'm happy to support this person as well sure. with, with what they're putting out. So it's like, it's a win-win. Yeah. I get something I want in return. I get to save a bunch of time. I get to enjoy doing my projects more. And I'm supporting and thanking financially someone that I'm following. Like, yeah. I've bought tons of stuff from people just for, for all of those reasons alone that I could 100% make it myself but why yeah. not so logan you said that the, i uh, uh it was pretty cool i had uh, go, go ahead go ahead i'm sorry i had a guy I, you, you'll like this i had a guy um so shopify allows people to to fight a charge if they decide they don't want to pay it so sure. like i sold a <laughs> i have plans set up a guy bought plans and then I get this email from Shopify. Their bank is is saying the charge is fraudulent. Yeah. Spit your documentation. I'm like, dude, bought plans for $12. The plan, <laughs> this is the funniest part. The credit card name is his email address. It's his first name at his last name email address. <laughs> I'm like, th th how do you how do you say this isn't you? You bought it with your credit card. It's emailed to your pl anyway. So I posted yeah. that on my story. And some dude uh, messaged me. He's like, hey, I want to support you. So I bought six copies of the plans. Oh, right. Nice. Right. It's it's, a, it's like there are people out there. It's just like somebody sucks. I mean, you know, like I've got I have, I have the same thing. I have plans and I'll get people like that all the time. Not all the time. Like maybe once a month, every other month. Out of principle, I just want to be like. You bought this. It's very clear on the website that it's for plans. You're not getting a dining room table for $20. Like <laughs> it's unbelievably clear. And they're like, where's my dining table <laughs> out of principle? I want to argue with them, but it is not worth my time. It is so much easier and it yeah. sucks to just let the person win. Just press refund, delete the message and move on with your life. Yeah. The guy didn't even send me a message. There was just no straight. message. There was nothing. It was, it, yeah. Ugh. I'm like, that's that's what a jerk. Ugh. Yeah. No that's, so Zach, you were about to say something. I'm sorry about that. 
No, no, that's okay. I just wanted to. So you said um, I, I'm just trying to figure out the, kind of the timeline of how this all went down. So you first introduced the uh, the jig. You got a good reaction to it, and then you partnered with this company to do the manufacturing for you. Um, do you ever attempt to do the manufacturing on your own? Is that what you're doing now? I never, even, I never, I never even thought of trying to sell the stuff. Like yeah. it was not, it wasn't an idea in my mind. Yeah. I was still, I was still searching for, Hey, what is my golden ticket? What am I going to put out there? And, and Ethan says, we'd like to start selling your stuff. And I was like, all right. So we started with that. We moved to my, um, my plywood router table which mm -hmm. is, you know, again, a simple piece. And again, I thought, well, nobody's going to buy that. That thing went off the shelves pretty quickly. Nice. Uh, awesome. And then we added in my bench topper, which is actually the thing behind me. Yeah. Um, and then they went out of business. So, so then th this is what drove me nuts is, you know, we get a message on a Thursday uh, and, and uh, Ramon Valdez messages me. Cause he was also one of the guys and he's like, what are you going to do for manufacturing? Because I'm supposed to be getting my stuff into woodcraft and now this is all falling up down. I don't know what to do. Oh, no. So I went and I have uh, a, a good friend of mine has a manufacturing company here. So it's always a weird story telling us he and this other guy own uh, a transport company where they like, they set up all the transport for UPS, FedEx, all this stuff. Like they do sure. all this stuff. And yeah. I, I swear to God, I think they had extra money and didn't know what to do with it. So they okay. decided to buy a bunch of woodworking tools. So okay. then they did a bunch of stuff. They had some fun with it. And then they hired these two guys who bought into the company, two or three guys, and they took over doing the majority of the stuff. So I went to the guy um, who was the partner and I said, listen, this is what's going on. I would like you guys to manufacture this because I think we can get it out and you know, I just, I've had a really good uh, feedback on this. I think now let's strike while the iron's hot. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a price. So, all right. Just to cut one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, just to cut it yep. out. Their price to cut out per unit on a CNC from one sheet of plywood that I was going to buy was, $10. I think, $42 a unit Ooh. is what they wanted. Whoa. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 Right. I, and that I doesn't said, even include like the price and of then, hardware or anything like that. Right. Nope. And then for, nope, for the <laughs> router table, which is this with a fence, right? A portable fence. Again, there's like six pieces to it, maybe seven. They wanted $72 a piece. Oh my Lord. Wow. Right. Just what? to put it on the CNC and cut it and pull it off. And I was like, yeah, bye. That doesn't even include like pack and pick, nothing. shipping, nothing. anything like that. Nothing. Right? Wow. Nope. And I said, I was like, I can't sell it for the price you're giving it to me. Yeah. So I, I, I had a one finity on the way it mm -hmm. came. I set it up and I was like, Hey, right, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to make them myself. And yep. this is where the trouble started because I, I told the story, I posted it on Instagram. And so oh, my normal no. post time on Instagram was around 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And by it, it posted to Instagram and Facebook, I think, so I had loaded them up on Etsy. I, I, I put 30 on there, even though I didn't have any made, I put 30 of each. Hey, you know what? I'll sell a couple. I, I literally expected to sell four. I, I'm like, I'll maybe I'll do a giveaway this weekend. I'll get some people interested. So overnight, that video got you know 600,000 views. Ooh I sold, I sold everything, but not overnight. Yeah. It got 600,000, but it was right. I, yeah, I yeah. sold out so in 27 hours. I didn't, I didn't post it to YouTube. I didn't post it to TikTok. <laughs> I didn't post it anywhere because I was after that because I was like, I can't keep up. My wife and I spent two weeks making everything. She came out. She helped me sand. And and the problem is what really sucks about that. And and again, you'll appreciate this. And and John Katz Moses would understand this. I didn't have the chance to price shipping. I didn't have a chance to check right. my prices and know yeah. that everything was accurate. So by the time it was done, I had underpriced the stuff. Not not hugely, but enough that you know. It at wasn't the end of it, I was like, time. I, 
No, it was, but it was. Okay. It, it, it was, but it wasn't. You know, it's one yeah. of those. It was so much work. Is the amount of work going in really worth worth that? So then, people kept messaging me, "Hey, when are you coming? Th- when are these going to be available? When are these going to be available?" So someone else messaged and said, "You should set up an email list and get people to give you their email, and then you can let everyone know." So yeah. by the time, by the time that was done, I had about five hundred. Uh, um, email addresses. Nice. And so when we were at workbench, so, so the bad part for me, like you guys talked a couple weeks ago after workbench, you talked about it and, and I didn't go to a whole lot of classes. I I made two mistakes. One, uh, I went there after two weeks of working 40 hour days. That's what it felt like. Like, you know, I worked yeah. nonstop. I right. So I was exhausted and I got to workbench and I had I hadn't eaten all day and I had a drink as I was eating and everything just went downhill. And I was I was like I was hung over the whole time and I could not actually have coherent. I think Zach, you and I talked at one point and I was like, I can't actually talk. I'm sorry, man. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. so stupid right now. <laughs> you see what I bothered me be- you. <laughs> yeah, but it bothered me because I, I felt like I couldn't have a good conversation. And I went there to have conversations. conversations right. And yeah. I, I right. And I feel like I wasted a big opportunity. But I met a guy <laughs> there who I talked to and he said, Yes, we can make these. He's in Texas. And he gave oh. me a, a, a potential price. We talked more afterwards. And so then we got a, a solid price and he made them. The problem was that it took, oh my God, it took weeks and weeks and weeks to get the manufacturing up and to get everything out up. And, you know, here I am selling and this is a pre-order. And when I originally talked to him, he said, it'll be two to three days. Once you get, you know, we get everything going, no problem. I'll get stuff out next week. And that did not happen. And so I have people, oh. well, you said this was coming. I'm like, dude, we got it. This is this is sucking butt. Yeah. So, so then after uh, about a month of it, we got out about, uh, I want to say about 300 uh, between the two of them. Uh, no, 400 between the router table and the jig, or the flattening jig. Right. Okay. He's like, I, I can't do this anymore. He goes, I'm having a baby, and he had priced himself uh, oh, too no. well as well. Uh, so he said. So it's okay. I was like, all right, I'll take back over. You know, I should be able to. And it, it, again, it comes down to, I, I have been working two full-time jobs between my full-time job and this. Yeah. And, and this is the part that, you know, when you were talking to Jim a couple of weeks ago that I was, I was listening to the podcast. It's really, the success is great, but you get to the point that that's all I am doing, it's all I've been right. able to do, and it's been yeah. wearing me down yeah. bit by bit. It's like you don't have the uh, time to start thinking about okay, how do I scale? How do I offload this to somebody else? How do I improve the product? How do I make it better for my customers? Like you don't even yeah. have that. You're you're just spinning your reels, just trying to get yeah. one thing out. Right. So I had people who were like, "Hey, I'd like a bigger uh, trim router, flattening jig." Right. Same idea. Uh, you know, they want one that can do um, a full size router. Okay. Hold on, I got to grab something real quick. So, so as I'm, you know, I haven't had time. So I went back to him, and now he's. We renegotiated. He's going back to manufacturing, but he's also he won't he doesn't want anything else. So like right now, this is for the full size Bosch. So yeah, I have yeah, it now yeah. for a full size machine. Uh, I've got the a larger trim router flattening sled that can do up to i think 21 inches wide um so like i've been able to do those yeah i'm really excited because uh the cool thing is not only is it longer uh one of the things i did not like um you can actually i for those of you listening you (laughs) should see a sticky note no it's like tape uh right over here you can see like tape uh residue so I, i just taped pieces on the bottom to elevate it and the new one, it took me a little bit of time to think about how I wanted to do it. I've got inserts, and you can put another piece on to elevate it. So it's an additional you know, plywood piece. And if you want to put a, additional pieces in between, you can extend it up. And it's oh, just doing the screws and threaded inserts, which you can readily find. And, and 
<laughs> adjust it and make it yourself. So that was the problem is like, I have these ideas and people want these. And I know that once I go really live, I, I put them on my Etsy and I've sold four of them and I haven't told anybody that I put them on my Etsy. <laughs> right. There, there's almost no marketing, right? If it's like, it's almost, you're afraid to market it because you don't want it to just be in a hole. Yeah. It's not almost, it's exactly it like I've been terrified. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if yeah. I get more orders, I'm done. I can't. And so Have... this, this thing sold out. I only had a couple of them. Uh, I had a couple on, on hand. I did a video again. It's probably three, 400,000 views. I'm like, okay, so I've got four or five people emailing me, you know, Hey, when is this going to be back in stock? And I'm like, I got a, so that was the conversation today as I went and talked to this guy about, hey, can you make these? It's simple. He's got this big, you know, four by eight CNC that, oh my God, it's so cool. Have you, now Zach, I'm sure you have, Eric, I don't know about you have, and or Derek, have you ever gone and seen one of these cabinet shops with their huge oh, CNC yeah, so cool. processes? Oh, I've never so seen awesome. it in person, but the videos oh. are, it's like, yeah. like I, I liken it to watching that, how it's made show from the discovery channel, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you're just sitting there with your mouth open. You're like, what? Oh. Yeah. So this guy's CNC, it's a, what is it? Five axis CNC. There are multiple, uh, I would say probably about eight inch vacuum plates that you can adjust and move around. And He's like, yeah, we do lamellos on this. It, it comes over to the side and it's got this <laughs> huge arm that moves up and forth. And he did a thing for me. He just ran it on air. But like it, in a matter of seconds, it cut out of a whole bunch of places. And and he said, oh, where you're standing on that mat? He goes, that's a safety switch. You have to stand off the mat. So uh, there's a whole mat oh, right in front of the machine because the arm moves and the arm moves so uh, fast. And it's... it's and if you're standing on there, that arm is going to just slam into you. Wow. That's insanity. So is your current menu? So first, I, I want to pause and say, I find this yes. unbelievably interesting. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. I tried to get into product sales and failed miserably. Okay. So hearing other people talk about it with success is super, super interesting to me. And I'm sure probably for the audience. Like, yeah, definitely. it blows me away. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. But so I, my question is your current manufacturing partner, are you happy with them? Obviously we don't need to say any names. Like, are you like, Oh yeah, they're great. Or are you like, I, I need to look for something bigger, better, more efficient. So yes and no. Um, I hope he doesn't listen to the podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the communication is difficult. Yeah. And this is, this is one of the things that I have found to be very difficult is like at, at one point we had talked and he said, yes, I, I might be interested in getting back to doing this again. And, and I'm, I'm drowning. So I'm, you know, I just need to know, are you going to be doing this? And right. he said, I, you know, give me a couple of days. I'll talk to the guys and I'll get back to you. So, you know, four days later, I reach out later, I reach out and I said, Hey, you know, what do you have? And I didn't hear anything. And I waited two days and I said, listen, there's another company that has reached out to me. I'm going to go with them. I appreciate your time. Thanks. And he gets back. He's like, hey, hey just wait. you got to let me have a chance to talk to these guys. Like, it, that's all I need to know. Like, I, I need right. to know yeah. a time. I need to have an idea. Yeah. And, yeah. and the biggest issue that I have is communication. And that's the biggest. I mean, he has his own successful business. This dude is, I, I'm honestly impressed. He's 28, 30. He's got... Uh, a whole bunch of employees. He's got this massive, massive warehouse size shop, three CNCs. He's got multiple businesses that he's running out of there. So then he's doing my fulfillment on top. I understand I'm a small part of that, but I also have, you know, my, my side of the business that I have to manage and, and For sure. trying to yeah. work through it with him is difficult. So, yeah. and then he doesn't want me to introduce anything else. I'm like, well, if I introduce this, the the big trim is what one of my uh, friends on Instagram name. named it. I like that name. I was like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's good name. Um, I was like, if I introduce this and it sells, I can't do it. I, I I just physically, I know already that I can't keep up with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's frustrating. Like that's frustrating for me to hear, let alone you being the person 
doing this because like this is your business this is how you make money and like you're you're leaving money on the table by not pursuing that you know what i mean a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah and and the thing is my wife last year uh lost her job so because she didn't do that you know she and our son um he has autism he was diagnosed Mm -hmm. at 16 with autism um and and he's you know it it, uh, he's on the spectrum he's He's fine. It's just her big job is really managing him, driving him around to yeah. college yeah. and appointments and everything else. And so she can't have a full time job because we don't have anyone else to help with him. Right. So this is money that we need. And yeah. so, you know, I'm I'm working two full time jobs trying to make it happen. Yeah. And I just want the well, manufacturing aspect to work. Right. Even- you it should be hands off. Like that's what Zach and I have said from the get go. Like if we get into the product thing, that's why I'm only in digital products right now because yeah. I do not want to do any of the manufacturing or fulfill. fulfill it's hard. Work. It's it's really hard. And then you know, Logan, you're talking about two jobs. You're really doing three because you're also doing right. content creation as well, yeah. right? Like you have right. to keep that right. machine going to as like a top of the funnel sales generation, right? And that that's been tough too because you know, yeah. like you said earlier, I don't. I didn't want to show pictures of this stuff because I didn't want to sell more of it. Yeah, but like yeah, if yeah. I sell more of it, I'm screwed. But yeah. then, it, then you it, you get stuck in that weird cycle, right? Because okay, business wise, I I've created this new product. I I want to market it to bring in money, but I don't want to make any content on that. So then now I don't have any content to make. So now that my now my now my content business suffers. It's it's this it's this. A vicious yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, you 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 hit the nail exactly on the head because that's uh, that all I've been doing is making these. I don't want to show them. And then the other thing I said, uh, and and I've said this a couple times, is in a way, I'm also losing money by focusing only on these. That means I can't come up with any other ideas. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. I, I there's I have other things I'd like to be able to build, but I don't have time to. Yeah. I don't have time to play around. Sounds yeah. like we need to get you. You, know, you go out to the Jonathan shop and my wife's like, tools. Hey, have a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, Logan, is that, uh, you know, Eric just said it kind of flippantly, but is that something you've explored? Have you talked to Jonathan? I was going to talk to him at workbench and we, well, again, I was never quite feeling on top of my game. And there were a right. couple times when I was like, Oh, I got to go down there. And when I would go down there, he would be up there, and I was like, "You yeah, ships in the night type of thing." Yeah, yeah. Um, I am, but I mean, you know, this is like, something I think he wants to do with more creators. I know he's, yeah, he wants to CNC products. I am writing yeah. out well, a note right now. I'm gonna send if you want me to. I will send him an email. Yeah, it's with a brief summary of what we talked about and just kickstart the conversation for you guys. Well, I mean, I think. I think we see and see that had a good business model or yeah. idea because there are a lot of people, um, you know, oh, I had a couple people reach out to me that they, they said, Hey, do you think they might be interested in doing this? One of them had this idea for uh, sanding coasters. And I was like, that's, you know, that's a cool idea. There's a lot of people making coasters. That's a great yeah. way to do it. Yeah. You know? And, and again, we, as makers, we just, most of us don't have the production capacity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're all and, people working in garages and stuff like that, right? It's, and and you guys will appreciate this as well. I also I don't have a pickup truck. I have a Honda Pilot. When when it was time to get a new stuff. car, yeah. yeah. Yes, I said to my wife, I was like, "Let's get a minivan." She's like, "Why sure. would you want a minivan?" I'm like, "Cuz I could fit a full sheet of plywood in there." Like, right. Like, yeah. You're not getting a minivan. <laughs> yeah. so I could put drywall in there. So so I and and Baltic birch plywood. I'm making everything out of Baltic birch plywood, which is also ridiculously hard to source. Yeah. So in order yeah. for me to get it, the guy that I talked to today, I I was cold calling businesses to find out if they sold Baltic birch. And this guy's like, well, what do you need it for? And I told him, he goes, well, I can order it from this place for you. And and it's a Atlantic plywood. I, I, I can't go in off the street and buy from it. You have right. to have an account, and you have to have a specific type of account to buy from them. And probably so he has that type five hundred thousand of- sheets of it. <laughs> right. So, so I can order from him, and he will place an order for five sheets of Baltic birch plywood. 
So then I have to go there and I take saw horses and I took my framing, my oh, wow. framing saw. Yeah. The, and it was funny because the guys come out on the forklift. One of them sitting there watching me They're like, oh, yeah, we've never seen anybody cut down plywood in the parking lot. I'm like, I don't have a choice. <laughs> like, yeah. it's yeah. I had to do when I had a Honda Civic, yeah. I had a, what a Honda Civic from 26, 2016, 2017 until, I don't know, when did I get my truck? Like in the fall, something like that? Yeah, like six months ago, there. something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, like what, eight years? But I mean, it five, yeah. four, three to four years of that was woodworking. And yeah, dude, I would, I would go, I would go get a sheet of plywood and I would, you know, be like, okay, well, this, you know, this cabinet's going to be, you know, 30 inches tall. Okay. I can rip yep. it at yeah. 30 and then put an eight, uh, uh, eight foot long sheet that's 30 inches wide through the trunk with the seats folded down and then leave the trunk open. I was like, okay, I can get home. I would do that in the parking lot and then make my final cuts at home. You get the weirdest looks, but like you got to do what you got to do. Right. Right. Yeah. You're at the end of the day, you're making money. My, right. uh, our old car was a Saturn view. And what I loved about oh, it was yeah. the front seat folded right flat up. and, Oh, and the back of the seat was plastic. So, or not oh. plastic, you know, it was, it was not like the cheap plastic. It was like the molded. So yeah. I didn't have to worry about scratching it up and I could put eight, I could put eight foot boards in there. This one, the, the front uh, passenger seat doesn't fold. It is kind of like forward. leans forward. So the only way for me to do eight foot boards is sit them between the, the seats. And, you know, I've, I've sat there with, you know, a stack of eight foot boards and, and I'm driving. Yeah. Half <laughs> oh over. yeah. Oh yeah. Who has it? It's a red yeah. and you're like passage. I can't take too sharp of a turner. I'm going to get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. I can't imagine going through all of that. And then on top of that, to have woodpeckers come in and do what they did, you know, like that. You know, listen again, it's, it's not, it's not patented. There's nothing to it. They came in sure. the, at, at some point, and and again, let, let's let's. I think it's really important that I have no proof that they did this. I know that they did it to, to Chris. I know they've done it to other people. I had an idea that that no one else was making and selling. You didn't. I didn't see it anywhere else on social media. That doesn't mean that they stole the idea from me. It doesn't mean that I I was the inspiration. Yeah. But the coincidence to me is there. And that's yeah. what I said. And, and again, they, it's, it's their business model. They have to do that. They yeah. have to. So I, and one of the things, you know, I learned, I think at workbench was that products have a about a two year shelf life. So at two years, they stop selling as much as they were. That sort of yeah. peters off woodpeckers has a line of stuff like that and in and their business model is every three months six months we're coming out with a one-time tool yeah they can only come out with so many one-time tools right they yeah. have to have eyes on their stuff so their business model is we need to come up with new stuff and we need to get people seeing it and so they're going to get ideas and take stuff wherever they are and it's business they they it is what it is it sucks but it whatever i mean yeah it's life and so for anybody yeah. who doesn't know i i feel like it, it's it's probably been talked about they have a group of guys a small group of guys that literally their entire job is to scour social media woodworking forums and they are highly skilled and fusion 360 and they literally just find these things on the internet and then model them and then send it up higher off the chain and see if they want to produce them. That's literally their job wow. is to, I'm not going to say copy, but draw inspiration from everyone <laughs> else's ideas. But again, you know what? Uh, listen, that's, so I was talking to, uh, and Zach, uh, I don't know if you know, Ryan Cochran, um, kayaking. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, He's uh, he's a great friend of mine. We were on the phone tonight and, um, you man. know, yeah, he's a great guy. And, you know, the, the one of the things we were talking about is you put out ideas. We all put out ideas that 
hey man, I hope I inspire you to make this. Very true. Very true. We don't we don't put out ideas that we say, hey, I hope some this inspires some company to take this idea <laughs> and make it. Yeah. You know, but Ooh. that's really what they're that's what they're doing. And you know, they they know hey, this is working. People like this, it's a good idea. Let's see if we can make it. And you know, they made some improvements on it for sure. Uh, you know, and and well, yeah. this is what it is. This is interesting. This is this just made me think. Okay, so I think we can all say if 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 we went out in our garage and, and developed some sort of product and we saw a big company like Home Depot now manufacture this product and give us no recognition, we're like, what the hell, right? However, if you see your neighbor across the street be like, Logan, I saw that. That's genius, dude. I want to make one of those too. You go, fantastic. That's yeah. awesome. Right. What? I, and I don't know the answer to this. This is, I'm thinking out loud. What number or what size of of yeah person, company or whatever does it then flip the seesaw that makes you yes. upset about something? I don't know the answer to this. It's I think it's an interesting thing to ponder. Yeah. Well, I think it's I think it's the idea that this company is taking an idea and profiting probably mm -hmm. a lot. And and I, I think it it's their a, own. A, yeah. One they're selling it as their own. You know, if they had come to me and said, Hey, we're we'd like to buy this idea off of you, I'd have been like, mm -hmm. as long as I can still sell some, sure, take it. Or sure, sure. You know what? Yeah. How, what's the number? What number are you giving me? You take it. That's fine. I, yeah. I don't have a problem with that, you know, but, and, and, and let's take two steps to the side because one of the things we talked about patenting, um, not, not the general, but you know, if you patent a, a thing, not only do you have to hope that you can defend it or manufacture it, you have to also hope maybe I can sell it, right? I can sell the patent to a company. Mm -hmm. And so once you put 13, 14, 20 grand into something and you don't sell it, yeah, you're out that money. What are you doing with this thing? If it, it's great, but oh. if you just have a paper that says you hold patent number 84 yeah. billion, it's useless. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That totally makes sense. Like, you have you almost have to know up front that, like you said, spending 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on all these legal proceedings yep. is going to, to pay off. And we, yeah. as we all know. There are things that you work on, content, items, whatever. You put out there thinking this one's going to absolutely kill. And it tanks. Yes. Right? Uh, yep. Yep. And well, it's the same with products. It's, yeah. it's easier for a big company like Woodpeckers because you have this back catalog that you're kind of coasting on, right? If they want to take a risk on some new product, you know, those legal fees are not that big a deal to them. But as a small individual maker, like a small owner operator shop, it's like that's a huge upfront cost. And it's yeah, it can be detrimental. I mean, obviously, it's for somebody like Logan, it doesn't even make sense to do. No, it makes so. no sense. It's 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 yeah. it's a waste of money for me. And like I said, yeah. I looked into it with a couple different things. Uh, and, and I talked to at least two or three different, uh, probably three, if I include informal talks and they all said the same thing, you know, Hey, it's a great idea. You could do it. I don't know that I recommend it. I, I think I, I'm happy to take your money, but that would be all it is, is I really be just taking your money. Yeah. Mm. And I think the majority of people truly believe those, uh, you know, the ads, if you send us your design, Sure. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. And for two hundred yeah. dollars, you can have a late, patent. Yeah. Those late night infomercials. Yeah, I forgot about that. Between those. the walk-in bathtubs and and reverse mortgages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually did. I so I hate to say this about eighteen years ago, probably because we were in our oh my my wife and I the kids I don't even know if our kids were little I sent one in I had an idea and I sent something in. And, uh, you know, you get a letter and they, they said, yeah, that idea is done to death, dude. You're out. Oh. You're done. Don't don't bother us. <laughs> That's a good but point. Here's the thing. Wouldn't that be an interesting business model if they sent that piece of paper to everyone 
And then they kept all of those ideas and tried to do 10% uh, different. That's a, that's right? a great conspiracy theory. That's that's my oh, conspiracy that her, theory for the night. Is that where Woodpecker started? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we don't know. We oh, that's know. funny. It could be. You can see that. Be. Oh, I got all these great ideas. What am I going to do with these? <laughs> it's it, I, no, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah. interesting, but it's just it's not worth it to go and and try to do that, especially when you know I'm lucky because now that I have this following, I can put stuff out and and yeah. as you as you well know, there's no guarantee that the people are going to see it. No, but there's more likelihood of people yeah. seeing it. Yeah. And you know, listen, the the bench topper video on Instagram did. So here here's some interesting stories, all right? Um the bench topper video on Instagram, I think it's somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. It's at it may be at 10,000 now on TikTok. You know, whereas um Zach, do you remember my my tabinet the folding table yeah, cabinet. The fold down. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. So so that's something else that is on my radar. So what it is, uh, for anybody listening who hasn't seen it, I mean it's it's gotten millions of views. Um yeah. uh, uh, literally, you know, like probably 40 million views overall. Oh, um it's, yeah. it's got it's good evergreen. It's, content, it's a right? cabinet, you you open the doors, but once you shut the doors, you don't even have to shut them. You can lift the front and the doors become a tabletop. And the frame of the cabinet becomes an apron. So it gives you just extra space. And uh, I called it in my original one, I called it the pizza spot simply because we were having pizza for my daughter's birthday party. <laughs> so August of last year, mm. I made plans. I finished up plans. I spent hours. Nice, yeah. Good idea. You know, yeah. So I spent probably 30, 40 hours making a product, taking pictures. I spent another 30, 40 hours making plans i was like oh my god i hope i make money on this because otherwise right. this time was a waste so i posted on tiktok and on instagram and on instagram it got 70 uh 70, views and oh in three days it probably had around five million views on tiktok so wow. it just yeah it went crazy i sold tons of the plans i was very very happy and then the same day that I got the email from We C and C that that they were closing down. Actually, I never got the email. Ramon called me and said, "What are you going to do?" And then I called them and they sent me the email. Um, I I had posted this on a whim uh, on Instagram. I reposted. I was like, "Oh, this is the video. I wish I had gone big in 2023." Right. And by the time that was over, that video had had something like 12, 14 million views. And I oh, sold, geez. I sold, yeah, hundreds of copies of the plans, which was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and true, I think I got 50,000 followers from that video. Ooh. Wow. Uh, yeah. This um, truly was nice. amazes me just to hear somebody that has such a high level of success with short form content because yeah, yeah it's just true. not something that I do. So like, yeah, it, it's interesting that you can you can recall these videos and go, oh, this one got this many views. This got this many views. I don't even know what the video I put out today, what it has. But YouTube videos, like ask me about any of my YouTube videos. I could give you a ballpark. It's because yeah. you yeah. you have a lot of care and passion for the short form videos. And I mean, I hate to say it. I, I don't for mine. Like it's it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's it's another art form as far as I'm concerned. You know, oh, it's, oh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. And it's same with the YouTubes. You know, it's what can I cut out? What can I speed up? Where do you know where does the story go? Um, yeah. I and I, I think one of the things that I've been lucky about is uh not lucky, it's worked out for me is when I really started making noticing a difference is when I started doing voiceovers. So yeah. Yeah. you know it that I think makes a difference too. And, and I mm -hmm. don't, don't get me wrong. I don't know the video, the view count for the majority of my videos. It's just those big ones. Um, I can tell you that the most views I got on a YouTube was, I think 12,000 
Like that That's was the good. most on an early one. Yeah, but but uh, but I haven't done anything like that since then. Anything else is just tanked. So because because I'm doing all the 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 shorts that have gone big. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. They don't, well, we have a whole theory you know, about the shorts versus long form stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> have it's, you it's two different Zach skill and I sets. Avoid it like the plague. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. But it's two different skill sets, right? And yeah. it's it's hard to it's really hard to master both. I don't yeah. know. Can you think of like a good creator who's really killing it? Two Moose both? Design. Um, yeah. So so I the other podcast, uh, there's three podcasts I really four that I have started listening to i've been listening to yours another woodshop podcast um and then what what is uh i can't remember the one with sam raymundi uh jeff and jess from two moose mm. oh i Maker didn't know that a podcast yeah it, it it's newish okay um, yeah. um so they they talk a lot about doing that and jeff made a separate account for YouTube shorts versus long form. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of people and he, that. and he's, he's said he's been blowing up on there and doing really well. Um, I don't know. You know, it's, I would love to do the long form and I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple. I just, I don't have the time. It's a lot. It's you, a lot. Have you thought about taking like a, a lot of your short form content that uh, categorizes well together and doing just like a five or 10 minute? Long I form? did. I actually did a couple okay. of those. I did some compilation videos. Like what? Uh, three of those? Yeah, uh, two or three of them did well. Uh, two or three of them did not, and then it was like, eh, you know, it's it's not well. It's good enough, I guess. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. eh, I don't know. Um, YouTube. You know, the, is a the other long problem is grind, though. Hmm. That's. I think. I mean, it, it my, runs, well, my between you guys doing the. Go ahead, sorry. No, Go sorry. Ahead. Hmm. I was gonna say the big thing is, you know, between you guys doing the thumbnails and yeah, and, you know, and then you also have <laughs> right, and, and I know I've talked to Suman lots of times about the thumb, you know, as Suman's uh line is this thumbnail is crap. This is crap. Um <laughs> I, I sent him a couple way back and and then I just stopped doing it. But the other part of it is that I haven't had time to dedicate to making one type of thing. Like, I'm not going to show you again how to make this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like almost once you, once you make a YouTube video on it, it's just like, I don't want to see that video every single week. If every single video you put out is, is how to build this, you know, trim motor flattening jig. I'm going to I'm be like, dude, I'm out. Like, I don't want to watch this every single week. Show me a new yeah. jig every week, which is not, you know, not sustainable. possible. Right. Well, and then, yeah. you know, it's it's half the time when you're making a jig, you're like, all right, how am I going to do it? Is this going to work? Let me just screw this together. And then so by the time you get it figured out, you're like, uh, I don't necessarily want to go back and rebuild it better. Right. It's working. <laughs> yeah. Know, so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. It gets to the whole thing that we tell every single person that asks about content creation. They're like, "Should I do short form? Should I do long form? Should I do product?" Uh, I, my response is always, "Do what you want to do and what you enjoy doing." If you yeah. think that making a long form video sounds like the absolute worst thing in the world, and you've tried it once or twice and you hate it, don't do it because it's not yeah. going to be sustainable. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. I love it. it. Off, I you don't want to do it every week. Right. Right. That's like signing up for a job that on day one you go to the interview and you're like, God, this job is going to suck. Why would you, <laughs> why, why would you stay? Just go, no, thank you. This is a good opportunity, but I'll pass. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't do it. It is, uh, it's a lot of work. And, you know, I don't know. And, uh, I can't complain about where I've gotten with the shorts and the, the reels, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I, I've gotten a lot of great opportunities. I mean, I dude, I went to fest tool yeah, twice yeah. now yeah. simply because of that. Um, yeah. and, uh, I'm going, so Maxiwa, um, who does the big table sliders and I have yeah, a yeah. table saw from them. I'm going to IWF, uh, in August. Hell yeah. For, 
Oh, so yeah. Okay. And they're, they're paying for me to go down there, put me up there. They want me to do a live and a giveaway. I'm giving away $2,000 towards one of their machines. Ooh. And they sent me an email today. They're like, here are the machines we're going to have there. We want you to play with them. We want you, you know, let's make some content with them. Okay, that's great. I'm going down to IWF. I'm going to walk around. I know uh, Vic Tesselin and Melbourne Tool Company are going to be down there. Like, I, I, you know, there's a couple companies that are going to be there and other companies that I want to meet. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing all the opportunities that no one expects mm. that come out of just putting yourself out there, right? So, sure, you you haven't been monetized on YouTube shorts. But in a sense, you have. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, just, no. you, you, you get what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you've, you've been able to effectively sell items and market yourself, get connected to brands who then, you know, pay you directly or, or indirectly. It's pretty damn cool that we, all of us have the opportunity to get involved in something like that. All it takes yes. Is a long ass time and a shitload of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been on Instagram years. since 2016. Right. I mean, for the yeah. for, for the first five years, I didn't pass 10,000. So yeah. one one piece that I want to add in that what you were saying, and and I want to add to this. So I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, bef I, I'm going to do a couple giveaways through the month of July. Uh, after I get back, I'm going away for uh, camping next week. And one of the things I want to do is I'm going to give away one of my big trim router tables. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, I don't think I'm going to give the big trim because I don't want to popular. I don't want too many people to see it. I'm going to give away one of the regular ones. <laughs> but what I want to do, and and so I was talking to Hannah from Surf Prep uh, over the weekend, uh -huh. and I wanted to get her input on this because, like, people don't come to my page wanting. I, I had a choice. I could give away a waterfall bench, or jigs so i'm going to give away the jig with uh bits and bits wherever it is gave me a flattening jig for it a uh, bit yeah and i'm gonna i'm really excited because well so the first part of this is i'm almost more like a brand than i am a maker because the people following mm. me aren't here to see aren't that nobody wants a, a waterfall bench from logan newman they right. want they want a jig from newman specials one of the yeah. ones that I'm selling. Interesting. So, so I think that will get me more engagement. But I also want to do Makers for St. Jude, which Surf Prep is big in. I use so, uh, Zach, you might actually remember this. Uh, when we first met, I was still shaving my head for St. Baldrick's. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's a children's cancer yeah. research, and I used to raise money and. Nice. So I stopped doing it because now that I'm older, I'm worried the hair. I don't like take when you go to get your hair cut and I'm sitting there and she washes my hair and she turns me towards the mirror. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so bald. She's like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So so, I, you know, I can't cut off any more hair because it might not come back. So I want to do makers for St. Jude. And what I'm going to do oh, is that's a good idea. people are going to be able to do the normal Instagram giveaway. You tag someone, you get a, uh, you get an entry, sure, but I'm also sure. going to do every $5 that they donate to makers for St. Jude will be another entry. Nice. So my, cool. so my goal is to do both a giveaway for one of these and to raise money. So I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, and that's what the, the conversation, you know, was just, I'm almost more like a brand at that point than I am. Yeah. I yeah. love it though. Does it does that trump do you do you like that? Is that where you want to be? Or did you want do you want to be more of a I don't know well, like I personality? Mean, let, let's ask you. You you have uh 42 bazillion followers on YouTube, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Zach's doing all right. Somewhere yeah, somewhere in that in that neighborhood. So <laughs> what is that, the but... what is the what do you think the majority of your followers are they makers following to get tips? Or are they people who just enjoy the things that you make? I think lately, definitely, it has veered much harder towards people who are just interested in the things that I make. I don't think, I think it's it's more, enter it's like edutainment, you know, like I right. throw in tips and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I try and actually stay 
more high level now and like talk about like concepts as opposed to like, oh, it's like if you rest your hand like this, it you can like you'll have more control with the soldering iron. Uh, I try and talk more more about like I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing or something like that. Um, so for yeah. you, if you were to do a giveaway, right? Which would they prefer something that you made or? I think if I was going to do a giveaway, it would have to be something I made. Like if I tried right. to give away, like you know, a, a soldering jig or station, nobody gives soldering. Shit. Some yeah, nobody would give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that, that's actually been something I've been through struggling Telegram. with. You know, talking yeah, yeah. Telegram. Talking to Jonathan, it's like he's like, oh yeah, like products are like so good, and it's but as like kind of like an entertainer, it's harder to do those products. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So people that I I would say that the people who follow me are majorly majorly i don't know they're <laughs> they're they're makers who who come to me for ideas they're neat things i mean i know for a fact there are people who follow me just because they enjoy it and i've, I've gotten those messages uh, as a matter of fact i got an email uh half an hour beforehand somebody saying listen i'd like to return the jig that i bought um I'm not a woodworker. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I bought it. I, I, <laughs> I have, I, I have no need for it. Yeah. So, but I, I, I think probably that's what more people are following me for. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and let's take one other side story and Eric, you'll like this. I do know the number for this. I had a 40 million view video uh, on, I don't know if it was in Instagram or TikTok. It was big on both of them. I have this thing called Raynaud's disease. Have you guys ever yeah. hear that? Yep. Oh, I remember this video. It was so funny too, because this just came up in my feed and I saw that it had so many views and I watched the whole video through. And then I got to the end of the video. I was like, oh, that was, I just watched one of Logan's videos. I thought I was just watching like some <laughs> random video on the internet. You're like, what Sorry happened to, to his fingers or his hand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always funny when people send me my own videos too. They're like, did you see this? It's like, oh, yeah, dude, that's me. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so my fingers, when it's cold and in periods of stress, my fingertips will lose blood flow. It's yeah. not a blood thing. It's a nervous reaction. Um, there's no fix for it. The only thing they could do is they could do like a, a nerve block. And obviously you don't want to oh, have that. So yeah. the video was me showing my fingers white under hot water and the blood coming back. And I talked about, it. you know, I, I, I love because, uh, the first thing I said is my doctor said I was a textbook example of Raynaud. So yay, I'm finally a, uh, <laughs> or he said, I'm a classic example. I said, so yay, I'm finally a good example of something. Um, <laughs> and, and so I did that actually, again, on a whim, I think it was about two weeks after I did the, uh, the tabnet video. So that tabnet video got me about 50,000 people. This one I got, I would say 10,000 followers from it but what i always yeah. said is i was i i actually would have preferred less i don't want i didn't right. want those people to follow me from that yeah yeah because yeah because my content is meaningless to a lot of those people right yes right you're it's, you're you know you're your woodworking channel you're not uh like medical oddities channel right right although i'm yeah. by myself i'm sure i could come up with a couple more medical oddities of myself <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the hardest thing to grasp as you know, if when you start trying to, to treat social media and content creation as a business, it's like sometimes people are like, I want to post a picture of my kid, or I want to post a picture with my buddies on the weekend, or like I want to post yeah, uh, a highlight of a sports clip. It's just like that's fine that you do post whatever you want, but realize that anything that you post that isn't on brand. Yeah, people are gonna go. I, I don't want to see this. Like, I mean, to be successful, you almost need to be like laser focused. I yeah. mean, you know, I say that. Well, it'll be interesting to talk um, uh, to Clayton in a couple of weeks when he comes on because Clayton yeah, yeah. does a decent balance. Like, he's he's killing it on Instagram, um, yeah. but he does some like personal stuff, like his kids in there, his yeah. wife's yeah. in there. But so. I feel like that's his brand. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's almost true. a personal brand. Like right? if I, yeah. if you know, I love my wife, but if I post a, a just a picture of her on my channel, you'd be like, "What?" Yeah, 
Yeah. Like, well, and that my wife would kill me if I did that as well. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all yeah, say it's... we uh, take this to the after show? Oh, my God. We're oh, an yeah. hour and a half in. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. realize that. <laughs> yeah, we're way over. I right, flagged well, it like 30 minutes ago, and then I forgot. <laughs> well, first off, Logan, for anybody who, who who's living on a rock and doesn't follow you, do some shameless plugs. Where, like, where can everybody yeah. find you? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, always Newman Specials. And if you Google Newman Specials, uh, it should come up with my Shopify store so you can see Perfect. the stuff that I have and, and everything else. And, you know, one of the big things that uh, I need, so if you do Google Shopify – and you know me, and you want to help uh, me organize my shop. I'm all about that. I had someone contact me earlier and say, "Hey, I would like to do this." And I'm like, "You're in Nigeria. I don't, yeah. I don't oh, know yeah, you." Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a yeah. Suspect. Shop. So, so yeah. all over. I'm, I'm all over. It's always Newman Specials, uh, which uh, you know, it's always a fun story how that came to be. But look me up, and that's where I am. Let's... Right on. Well, Lugan, Le- Lugan. <laughs> I'm not even drinking. It's water. Logan, yeah. dude, thank, as always, thank you so yeah. much. I, I always have a blast chatting with you from the first time we met at Festival. And just, I, I and really appreciate it. Yeah. I, we, I truly, truly appreciate the invite and uh, the opportunity to come in and talk. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We're, we are going to head over to the after show. That's at patreon.com slash off the cut podcast. And we've got some fun questions and some just more general questions from our patrons and uh, nice. this will be fun. This will be fun. Nice. So everybody, we will be over there. If, uh, if you want to join us, you know, you're welcome to, there's a link down in the description, but if not, we'll catch you next week and make sure you uh, go check out uh, Logan on all the social media channels and buy some stuff for him. Support this guy. That's right. Ooh, amen. <laughs> yeah. See you, everybody. All right. See you. Bye. See ya.